the day is finally here. After countless leaks, trailers, and a countdown that's been going on for like 50 days, the day has come when Ninjago Dragons Rising will come out. But I know what you're thinking. I thought he liked Star Wars. Well, let me give you a bit of backstory. When I was a little kid, I used to love the show Ninjago. But then, they decided to release this abomination, the Lego Ninjago movie. At the time, I hated that. I didn't even watch the movie, I just saw the design changes and from then on I did not touch the show or any of the sets. Fast forward to last year, I ended up rewatching the entire show and even up to the point of the redesigns. Honestly, I kind of prefer now the new look over the old one. Anyway, this made me re-like the show and this led to where we are today. Alright y'all, so it is currently 9.55, so almost 10. Um, kind of just waiting right now for the, uh, episodes to drop. I'm currently editing a video. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna kind of spoil what it is. It's, uh, right there. I'm kind of working on that right now. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm just kind of waiting for the, uh, episodes to drop and I'll catch y'all when they do. Alright, a little update. It is currently 12.08. And for the last, like, eight minutes or so, I keep, you know, looking up... Ninjago, when it comes through, the new episodes weren't there. So I looked it up, and apparently, they don't come out until uh, 12 o'clock Pacific time. So that's 2 o'clock my time, and I'm, and I'm not trying to stay awake till then. Um, but so what I think I'm going to do, I'm... Alright, um, I just woke up, there we go, I'm going to go ahead and press play, so I'm not doing this all day, but I will catch y'all when I'm done. Alright, before we get into this video, I just wanted to say this is your official spoiler warning. Uh, I talk about a lot of pretty much everything that happens in the show, so if you don't want to be spoiled, uh, uh, I suggest you just go watch the show and then come back. I also wanted to say that the clips I play, um, while talking about it, I do not own. But anyway, enjoy the video. Alright, the way this review is going to work is I'm pretty much, I'm going to go pretty quickly. Just because we have a lot of episodes to get through. But basically, I'm just going to go each episode, say whatever I liked and whatever I didn't like about it. Okay, starting off with the merge part one. Um, this is honestly... One of my favorite, like, starts to a season. It starts off very strong. I liked how the merge was quite sudden and brief. I was worried. I didn't really want it to be over the course of two episodes. I thought they made a good decision by making it nice and short. Uh, but they introduced uh, Aaron and Sora, as well as a few other view villains. Um, and the whole... They kind of get the whole storyline started. They wasted no time uh, really telling us that this is a whole new story. You know... Um, the old ninja aren't, are hardly even in this episode, except for Lloyd, who's in the very end. But overall, uh, it's just, it's starting a new show. Um, and one of my favorite moments from this episode was the moment where, uh, the ninja saved Lloyd in the very beginning from the merge. I thought that, that was amazing. That gave me chills from the, everything from the music to the graphics, which I must say, compared to to the previous seasons the graphics this season like overall how everything looks is amazing like you could not tell that it's the same animation studio except from a few like minor things like it looks so incredibly good right now but you know i also like how it's kind of a different story or in in the fact that it's a new show but like you know each time with the ninja there's always at the very beginning it implies that there's this new big bad guy where with this, it's something completely different. Uh, except for Imperium, it's kind of like it's just something that happened. And I thought that was just kind of, uh, that was just a pretty cool aspect of this first episode. Um, trying to think about anything else to say. I also, I love seeing Raz, he's like the tiger dude, drop from the uh, like sky or whatever onto the bridge. That part... He, he applied himself and he lets you know that he was not here to play around. He was here to do business and he did that. Um, what else? What else? What else? What else? Um, 
Uh, well, I think that's just about... Oh, another thing. Uh, it goes again with all the detail in the crossroads. It was with every all those details in like every uh, person there. I saw ninjoids. I saw rugrats. I saw the snakes and the squid people from uh, the Endless Sea. And those were all little details squeezed into one area and i just thought it was so cool the idea of like people misplaced by the merge i just thought that added up like really nicely but other than that that is gonna probably wrap my thoughts up for this first episode again a very strong start uh in my opinion stronger than most seasons start you know uh, occasionally for ninjago it's like it's kind of just random stuff until they can implement the storyline but this is starts the storyline off strong and in a good direction moving on to the merge part two um the second episode starts off right where you left it with lloyd saving the two from the imperium uh trailer or uh train whatever you want to call it but um again the fight scenes have really improved and as these two episodes keep going i'm growing super attached to those to aaron and sora like they haven't even given us that much details about them except for aaron but you know, at the time, you know, Eric, he's taught himself Spinjitsu. Sora has this, like, strange power that works. Um, I just think everything just... Right now, I just feel like everything's going together so well. It's the episode where Lloyd uh, finds uh, Ryu's home. Uh, this did spark something I wasn't a fan of. I wasn't a really big fan of the whole, like, telekinesis thing with uh, the dragons. Um, but it, it's kind of just a small thing. I kind of look past it. But I know people are always complaining about how when, like, things are the worst, the ninja always get this, like, OP, like, ability. And that is kind of true. You know, air jitsu, tornado creation, all that stuff. But, I, I don't know, for some reason, it just didn't feel the same. Uh, very little about this show has felt similar to any other, like, Ninjago thing that I've seen. And I, I'm, all, I'm all for it. But it just didn't really feel like the other ones. Because, you know, while the other ones, they can do it over and over and over again. You know, Air Jitsu, Dragon Form, uh, Spin Jitsu Burst. And they were completely fine after this one. It was like it took a toll on Lloyd. You know, it drained him and all that. But, um, you know, seeing all the dragon species are cool. See, especially seeing all the new locations from the merged realm. Uh, you know, in the first episode, it showed us a map. I just thought, you know, that's just something that's pretty cool. Something they very rarely do, but it's always go it always goes a long way when they do it, is the implementation of actually how the ninja got their suits. You know, um, Lloyd, I'm pretty sure in this episode, explains where he and Kai had been, or what they'd been doing when they were... But they just kind of get the new suits out of nowhere, you know? They were in their, their one suits during the merge, and then all of a sudden they were in these other suits. But, uh, you know, it just it, it's whatever. They don't typically cover that stuff. Uh, anyway, moving on to the next episode, episode three, Crossroads Carnival. Uh, this I have in my notes as probably my least favorite episode of part one. Uh, just, it's so uninventful compared to the last two episodes. You know, the last two episodes we've had the buildup of Imperium, you know, Raz, Radon, or whatever his name is, uh, and inevitably the, um... Just everything that's gone into it, it just it felt so uneventful. I'm not saying it's a bad episode. I just wish they could have done more. You know, they uh, they worked on building the characters up. They worked on Lloyd's character with him training. Uh, Aaron and Sora both equally. I kind of wish they put more into it, but there's nothing that big to complain about. Um, I'm trying to think, is there anything else in this episode that really... Um... Oh, they recruited the magician, dude. I can't remember his name, but they recruited him to Imperium. A movie gone. Episode 4, Beyond Madness. It's it's a more enjoyable than the previous one. Um, you know, it was interesting to see uh, to the story unfold with the rock monsters and the uh, dragons. Uh, and then implementing Nia and Kai into all that. Kai just takes a beating this season. I don't know what it is. He's getting hit by, like, every single thing. It's kind of gross when the rock thing took its eye out, ate it, swallowed it, and then it came back into his eye. But, um, yeah, the dragons, I've kind of mixed feelings on the dragons this season. Some of them, you know, they look cool. Like, the earth dragons, they look pretty cool. But ones in, um, future episodes, I'll talk about them when we get there, just kind of look weird. Uh, but for the realm of madness, I, I don't know, it just didn't really feel that. I wish they did a bit more for that. 
But overall, this is still a very solid episode. Now, building up more of that characterization for Sora and Eren, uh, it just works. It just works well. Um, I'm also happy to see Kai playing a more... I'd, I'd say that's pretty much everything to talk about beyond madness. Don't really know why the dragons were eating their rocks life support. You know, this season lies heavy on the mystery elements. But yeah, that's going to wrap up episode 4. Moving on to episode 5. Riders of Destiny is uh, possibly one of my favorite episodes this season. Uh, you know, it doesn't really have much to do with the overall story. But, you know, it was nice to be, like, back at one of the older, like, POIs. Especially um, because Season 6 was one of my, like, favorite seasons. Being back in the Cloud Kingdom was just pretty cool. I, I will say, though, I I I'm not a fan of how the Cloud Kingdom looks now. I much prefer how it used to look. Um, but, uh, the, I'm trying to figure out information about the merge, uh, the whole, like, monks thing where they, like, write destiny, uh, that's always fun to watch it unfold. Um, the big purple monsters, uh, you know, they're giant monsters, not much else to say. My highlight for me, probably this episode, is the Master of Wind. Uh, the, it, I feel like it's kind of adding up to another element I'll talk about, but in, in case you didn't know... Master of Wind is in this episode, uh, a new one, it's a monk, and they were able to, she helped stop them, and then was originally nervous that her people would banish her, but then were, was honored, and then Lloyd said something along the line of, I already, I knew the old one, and I like you a lot more. That just, that just has a special place in my heart, because, you know, season six was one of my favorite seasons. But at the very end, when Nia stays uh, at the Cloud Kingdom, another ninja go off to continue their journeys and the merge quakes are getting worse and all that it's just an extremely solid uh episode you know now i think it's fair to start talking about the characters because aaron has come a long way you know you've learned a lot about him so are not so much ryu you know very little about it all you know is he's cute but moving on to episode six return to imperium this is where sora's character starts to shine you know at the beginning of this season uh it was mainly on aaron now it is most it's going to be mostly on Sora for the next few episodes. Um, I like seeing all the flashbacks. You know, the Imperial Hound was devious. How Sora made it and all of that, and how she had such an advanced like backstory with Imperium. Like I knew she had some sort of history with it. I kind of wish we got to see more of Rat. You know, he was just it's such a unique villain that he is, and to see as little as we do, uh, I just wish we could see more. I'm hoping we'll see more. Um, in part two, but, uh, Radon, or whatever, the dude who people originally thought was a Chronix, <laughs> he's one of my favorite villains, he's funny, I enjoyed seeing all the flashbacks, you know, it's always good to get more insight to, and it just builds her character so much more, but other than that, that's pretty much all that's happened, episode seven, Mindless Beasts, um, the Crime Fighters Club, uh, was kind of cool, um, when... It was cool to see Sora with the uh, Sora dragon. You know, the Sora apparently means an ancient uh, Imperium uh, orphan. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Kind of interesting to see because Sora originally went from a character who wanted nothing more but then to work with this scientist to absolutely hating her and hating everything that she does. Uh, but the highlight for me this episode was Lloyd and the uh, other Master of Fire. I don't exactly remember her name. But it was another Master of Fire, and substantially, their elements look a bit more powerful than Kai's. Um, I'm excited to see where that hat takes us in the future, but, you know, this is the episode I'm really talking about. Like, like the dragons are cool and all, but they just, I don't know, part something about them just looks weird. This is also the episode where we saw Sora actually use her powers without Ryu. Uh, Ryu before would charge them up, but she was actually able to use them for a little while uh, without him. They were extremely weak, and it led her to still being captured, but, you know, it was still cool to see it. Um, and that's going to pretty much wrap my um, my my thoughts up on Episode 7. I know I'm not really going too, like, in-depth here, but Episode 8, I Will Be Danger, uh, is also a pretty good episode. I like seeing all the flashbacks for, um, I, I don't, I keep, I keep wanting to say her name's like Wildfire or something, but I don't know, I just can't remember. Also... Somewhere, or I'll mention this at the end, but, um, you know, Chaos is an Imperium. The dragons that they found that Lloyd and the Elemental Master set free are, like, causing havoc above the streets. And then the whole story with Kai and Nia. 
uh, that was very intriguing, though I'm still left with very much questions. And then at the very end, when all the dragons started fighting all the Imperial Hounds, that was extremely entertaining, and I just wanted to see more. I mean, you can't just stop watching after that. Uh, but yeah, another extremely solid episode. I know I've said this already, but I like how it switched from being mostly about Eren to mostly about Sora, and I just think that adds so much to their character. The next, the calm inside. Uh, this is one of my also one of my favorite episodes this season. Um, you know, it starts with the uh, Lloyd's little flashback of him being young and all of that. Uh, I I kind of wish they did a bit more for that flashback, like maybe uh bring the old voice actor for Lloyd, uh, especially for something like this. I know that would have, especially since there are a few people out there who don't like the idea of a new show. I think that would have done a lot to bring some people back. But um. This is kind of where uh, I don't want to see Sora's character that much because it kind of just feels like she goes back and forth with the Imperium Guard. She's captured and then sets herself free. Captured, then set herself free. It feels like she, that goes back and forth for about four times. And I don't, I don't, I'm not saying it's bad, but a moment I saw uh, that really got me thinking was is the moment when Lloyd's kind of just standing in the middle of the battlefield unaware of what to do. Uh, that I love moments like that where like, it seems like everything's lost, and it actually got pretty dark, especially for Ninjago. But it was also it's also fun this episode to keep up with Kai and Nia's story because you just have no idea what's happening. And then the at very end when um, they find Zane in that little machine, you know that that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, that's gonna again wrap my thoughts up for episode eight. And moving on to the final episode. Um, you know, and the last episode ended with, uh, Zane and them coming through the port or the building thing. Uh, I just have so many questions about all that, you know, like how, I, I don't know. <laughs> I just don't even know what to say, but, um, seeing the ninja fight all together again was heartwarming flashbacks. Again, it all just adds up so well. And I feel like this season, there's just something about this season. Like part of me doesn't think it should work like with all this stuff going on, but it just does. And then Lloyd and finding the giant power dragon or whatever, his visions. There's moments in there where it gets kind of dark. You know, it's um, when he finds that like grave or whatever. You don't typically have moments like that in Jago, But when you do have them, they're typically pretty good. Um, yeah, Lloyd goes Super Saiyan again. You know, everything ends up being okay. I, I, I don't really like how, you know, I don't want to see Aaron and Sora lose. You know, they, they were fighting Roz. Uh, I just don't think they should have been able to defeat him. Or I guess they didn't necessarily defeat him, but they, like, they they embarrassed him, bro. Like, I thought he was going to be this new bad guy, but, though, know, he kind of got scolded by two little kids. But all the dragons, you know, everything going on, it's hectic, it's pretty good, and it's extremely entertaining. And it leaves me with tons of questions and longing for part two. And that's about wrapping up my thoughts. Uh, overview, a very strong start to the new uh, show. You know, it implements a lot of factors that I think work really well. And it doesn't feel like Ninjago whatsoever. It just feels like something so completely different. And I'm honestly for it. But I don't know if it's just me, but I kind of see a pattern. You know, implementing Sora, Eren, the master, new master of wind, the fire person, fire girl. Uh, I don't know if this is actually a thing. But it's kind of like it's slowly building up a team. Um, a team of new elemental masters, which I think would be cool. You know, we've been with the previous ninja for the last 12 years. I think it'd really be cool to uh, see a new team. But, uh, you know, that's just something you have to take so precautiously. Because uh, if you do it wrong, you can lose pretty much your entire fan base. But um, this season relies heavily on mystery. And I, I really like that because there's just so much still that's unknown. You know, what caused the merge? Imperium. Like, what's all that stuff underneath it? It, it, it? There's just so much more to be explained considering some of the sets, like that temple, have not even even occurred in the new season. Uh, Jay and Cole fans, uh, they were not even in the new season either. Um, but there was just there's just so much about this season that just goes well for me. 
And that's going to pretty much wrap up my thoughts on Ninjago Dragons Rising Part 2, or Part 1, I should say. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more reviews like this when the show uh, releases new seasons, let me know. And if, if you wouldn't mind doing me a solid, hitting that thumbs up, you know, that always helps me out. But that's going to wrap it up, and I'll see you all in the next one.
appreciated, and I'll see you on the next one.